Hello and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Sally Poinsett Nash. I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And it's Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! And I'm Alexandra <laughs> Weapon! <Wendland>. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Welcome to Awake One's Halloween Special! I'm Alexandra Wenman. I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And I'm Sally Poinsett Nash. So, this is Sally the Pumpkin, Al the Ghost, and Lorraine the Witch. Um, this, is, this is as Halloween <laughs> as we have. Halloween as we managed to get today. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about all things Halloween and maybe even share some spooky stories. Um, if you want to see a really spooky story, though, reel back through our videos and have a look at our escapades in Joshua Tree. That's probably the Haunted best. Cabin. The Haunted Cabin is probably the best one. Um, but I'm going to start with Sally. Have you got any stories to share about Halloween or even just spooky stories that might be relevant or appropriate? I think up until um, I'd met both of you... Um, <laughs> I tended to avoid any spooky <laughs> stories. <laughs> um, never had a thing for horror movies, never been into... I've had some scary real life situations, but not kind of ghostly, ghouly, yeah. scary. I'd avoid Halloween, not really my thing. Um, just the most scared I've ever been really was Joshua Tree. <laughs> Which is the video that Al just mentioned. Which, in terms of scary experiences and intense spiritual energy, was even pretty high for the two of us. So it was up there. Baptism of fire, mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the human side of scary and people coming at you or, or you being under attack from people doesn't really scare me. I kind yeah. of I have the fight, not the flight <laughs> situation. But yeah, definitely when it came to the paranormal. <laughs> elements and a very real very tangible that this is not just a feeling that there's stuff yeah. happening physical manifestations um it will just start yeah stuff falling it, it just it wasn't possible yeah. it wasn't possible that something just fell in the way that it happened yeah and because i don't you know i sense that there's something seriously up with it with a, an environment or a person or a situation i can't really i can't really see it can't I certainly can't have a conversation with it and say why are you here? Yeah. What do you um, think you're doing? Well, you kind of can. I'll show you. You know, I'll give yeah. you some tips. I'm not sure I need to have those <laughs> conversations, but you know, kind of more the human stuff. I I'm a lot more comfortable yeah. with. Um, I don't need to be scared. I think being a human's scary enough. <laughs> no. Yeah. I used to be. I used to love horror films. I used to love going and seeing scary movies with my friend Bex. Yeah, and then I used to. Just can't do it anymore. No. Too, I think because it is too real life for yeah. us, right? Like it's too. Why would I want to? Everything is energy, and even when yeah. you know, it, you might not. You might think it's oh, it's just a story, but it's the intention behind it. If an actor is really believing what they're doing, they're actually creating that scenario so what about you Laurie any Halloween tales you want to share oh, I'm sure you have loads <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my favorite ones was going up to Scotland and going up to uh, Stirling where it's kind of on the, the borders of uh, the Ball Battle of Bannockburn which was the whole Braveheart and uh, William Wallace and it was a convention, so people had flown in from all over the world and there were talks on various different people on paranormal stuff. It was the um, Society for Psychical Research that had put it all together. But as we were driving up there, or I'd flown up there, I suddenly had this overwhelming, as we often do, overwhelming urge that I had to go back to the site of the battle. And I'd been there many, many years beforehand and had felt and sensed all of these ghosts. It was like they were still fighting on the battlefield, but back then didn't know anything about how to clear them or what to do. But we were quite a, a way out, but I just spoke to one of the guys, told him the story, and he went, well, I've got my car, why don't we go? So I just, I just left everybody at the, um, at the conference thing, and then just, we raced out, and we were kind of on the edges of it. And it was just really surreal to be there on Halloween, and, and going in and meeting all of these ghosts and these spirits who had been there for obviously hundreds and hundreds of years and just give them permission to go home. And I'd seen in my vision that it wasn't just people, it was horses, it was dogs, there were these huge, great big kind of wolfhound type dogs and there were women and children that had been on the battlefield 
trying to find the you know like finding bits of their loved ones that had just been left behind and so it was this really really moving and and powerful experience and then of course what was really crazy was then the reward was to go back and then go to this ball where everybody was dressed up as witches and wizards and just some really amazing costumes and then just go and dance the night away having cleared and, and almost done the, the work that you needed to do so that was a particular particular favorite halloween that's a good one yeah, yeah. Well, i think one of my favorites was the one we went to last year where our friend victoria invited us to this farm where was it oxfordshire or something towards reading I think, towards it? Reading. Yeah. we went to this beautiful farm green broom farm where it was all like people living just off the land kind mm. of off-grid living and Victoria made us all beautiful. I think I've still got some footage so we can share. Yeah. She made us all beautiful velvet black cloaks. And then we opened, we had a proper, um, it was a proper Sawain, which is the real uh, meaning behind Halloween, which is when the veil is thin, of course, and then you're aware of the, you know, the other At nights. midnight. At midnight. And so we had this incredible night and we opened the circle, had a sacred circle and honoured the goddess. And I remember sitting there and at one point we were just all sitting in meditation and I literally felt and saw so many beings come out of the woods. We were in the middle of the woods in, in pitch woods. black with just like a few candles laid out. And it was like literally I felt so I felt the woods come to life. And it was literally like I actually heard footsteps walking yeah. behind us but we'd cast this sacred circle so you, they couldn't get in the circle uh, I do remember that there was one guy with us that was a bit drunk and a bit unruly who'd asked to join and I think yeah. he thought it was a bit of a and I was a bit worried about that because it, it, we needed to have this sacred safe space yeah. he, was, he kept trying to drink he was trying the, to leave the circle <laughs> as well he kept trying to drink the, drink the ceremonial, ceremonial wine. wine oh my god well, we had to keep him in the circle because the like, Victoria's like don't go out of the circle <laughs> Stay in here. <laughs> but yeah, it was very... He was um, like an elemental, wasn't he? He was like a little elemental. But I remember one time years ago, I, it wasn't on Halloween, but my friend Brooke and I, I must have been about 17 at the time, we both decided that we were going to have a go at a Ouija board. <clears throat> and she would actually bought it. I didn't realise you could buy them like yeah. a, like a yeah. game. And she had this whole thing, I think it was called the Psychic Circle or something, with the whole thing... And we'd go and we'd sit in her bedroom at night and we did this for weeks and we'd sit there and we'd chat and we'd move, the, we'd, we wouldn't move it, but we'd ask questions. And we actually, she had a friend who was in spirit who'd actually moved to London, become a backpacker and was coming to London on his um, uh, first, you know, kind of gap year thing and had got here and um, taken his own life and found out right. that he'd been manic depressive, but he came through for her really clearly on the board and then one of my guides came through and we did this for weeks and again it's about I think responsibility because we didn't really know what we were doing yeah. I think we were quite protected but we, we we remember doing a white light thing but not really knowing what to do um but it did come with some instructions a board game it was really weird but then one night we um we went and she it was a Friday night she was like do you want to come around and we'll we'll, we'll go we'll use the Ouija board again and we'll, we'll ask some questions and we were just getting into it and she bought a bottle of wine upstairs and straight away the thing went, no, 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 no. And it was like, and we're going, what? Is it, are we not allowed to talk? No, 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 no. And then Brooke said, is it the wine? Yes. And we were being quite irresponsible because we didn't, right. you know, we brought, it's like bringing a lower energy. And I yeah. think and we were, you know, not respecting the space. So, yeah, so it was like, ah! we put it away and we never got it out again I never went back there because it was like really like oh my god could we have but that to me was yeah. like proper protection but it was the scariest thing but I used to always have experiences like that where I'd get interested in spirituality and then something would spook me and I'd yeah. pull yeah. back yeah. so I, mean, I had that a lot of times yeah we did I had a bad Ouija board experience I oh, had the one happen. yeah it, it was um it, I don't think you can track which school I went to it was a teacher doing this after school a teacher in the evening we went I back i want to go to that school <laughs> no it wasn't great um and we went back to school late in the evening a bunch of us and we did a ouija board with the teacher oh my god wow um i was young it's, it's so like looking at it from my age i'm like what oh. what? <laughs> what was the guy thinking yeah. um but the room that we were in it 
the door got wedged shut, but the windows were banging and there was it, the whole thing was just utterly horrendous. Whether it was staged through the teacher, I couldn't right. tell you, but I think for every single one of us in that room who we couldn't physically get out of the room, no. we were terrified. I don't think it was staged. No, it didn't yeah. feel staged, but we were kids, so yeah. you know, could. How old were you? Uh, Thirteen. Oh my god. god. We had a, 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 a controlled Ouija board environment on a retreat I did in Devon in, uh, when was it, God, way back in like 2009 or something, it was a long time ago, um, by a lovely lady called Hazel Lee, and she's a, a psychic medium, she's a TV psychic, and um, so she was teaching mediumship, so we're, we were kind of tuning in doing some mediumship stuff, and then in the evenings it was optional if you wanted to come and partake in the Ouija board. But the other thing we did, the Ouija board thing was quite nice and I spoke to my granddad and I got told information about Egypt as well for mm. later on. And then um, we did something called table tipping. Have you ever done table right. tipping? Yeah. Oh my God. Mm. So she had this table, small table, and we were all in a huge group of us and everyone had to have a fingertip on the table, at least one fingertip on the table. Yeah. And then she was playing... Um, old war songs like old music and asking spirit to come in and dance and move the table i kid you not this table came to life mm. and this table was dancing around the room and not one of us had more than like just the tip of our finger on it and it was actually dancing and moving and the energy was really high and it was it was actually a really positive experience we didn't have any negative energy in the room but when i looked down and i was quite new to all of this I looked down and I saw all these faces in the tabletop looking up at me. It was like, oh my God. It was like, you know, like really old, the old really yeah. old time kind of, yeah, 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 kicking your heels up. But God, I've never experienced anything like it. It was just like a bit yeah. of fun, a bit of fun yeah. hanging out with your friends on the other side of the veil. So I mean, what's <laughs> the origins of, do you know, the origins of Halloween and... Well, it's, it's, all, it's actually that All Hallows Eve. Yeah, it's All Hallows Eve. So yeah. it's did, it's the really Eve know. of All Saints Day. Yeah. So originally it was. It's on the pagan calendar. It's on the pagan calendar, yeah. but the idea was that you honoured the ancestors mm -hmm. on All Souls Day. So it's those that have passed, those that have gone before. Does it only come from like that pagan roots. It's come from pagan roots, yeah. But then I think it got kind of taken over and, and turned into... Do they have similar stuff in the East as well, don't they? But I don't know what it would be They called. do. So in Mexico, they have like the Day of the Day Dead. Day of the Dead, yeah. yeah. Which is, uh, yeah. you know, it's a similar thing. But obviously the eve of it, because it's midnight, yeah. which is where the veil is supposed to dim between the worlds. And so that was traditionally the time when you could speak to your mm. long-lost right. loved ones. So you could actually get in contact. So that's why the night before, so the 31st of mm. uh, October became the celebration more than because nobody really honors the day and that's the thing it's a bit it, it's it's wrong really the 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 first should be the day that is celebrated yeah, yeah. not the eve but it's become this commercial a bit commercial now, yeah. in america but well, i lived in the, i lived in california for a few years but there they open shops specifically that sell oh, yeah. stuff for halloween yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. when i lived out there it's like how is it this Big, and all the houses huge, decorated huge, and huge. Yeah, so uh, I just remember going around just getting some sweets and stuff like when we yeah. were kids from the local houses. But I mean, it's yeah. immense. My sister works for Virgin, and so one year she her trip, her work trip that year was actually to go to San Francisco. So she invited me along, and I've never <laughs> experienced anything like it. She said, "Bring a fancy dress costume because we will be going out." And it was the entire crew came out, and the pilots and everybody, everyone was dressed up in amazing costumes. And I, it was quite funny because I'd found this little um, little dog handbag, little white fluffy Dalmatian dog. So I went as Cruella de Vil, like this long <laughs> black wig, yeah. and a big white streak coming out of it. And I did all the makeup, amazing. And then every single house was decorated, mm -hmm. every house, every restaurant everywhere that we went and then we went down into the i don't know what they call it but the um the castro is it i don't know one of the yeah, was it really. and it was just procession after procession but my favorite is bit it was just so random was that there were about eight or nine big uh, i suppose you call them the big bear the gay guys with the big moustaches oh uh -huh. and the <laughs> big beefy guys 
all dressed up as dead Marilyn Monroe. Oh my god. <laughs> all in the white dress with his hairy chest poking out. But they all had the flowy dresses and they all had the blonde wigs on, but still and with the red lipstick under the moustaches, and it was just the most surreal thing. But so again, I'm kind of torn because there is a part where you should respect the ceremonial aspect of the day, but to be there where so people were yeah. getting together and having fun and actually making it into a, a proper event. I think anything that brings joy and you're mm. going to celebrate stuff and you're going to honour the event and the experience, I think is a really good idea. I just think it's a shame that we've lost the fact that we should yeah. honour our ancestors on that day. It would be much nicer yeah. if it was the celebration, the party. I don't know how it turned into sweets, by the way. Yeah. I don't know how it turns into trick or treat and, you know. All of that. Because it's spooky, I suppose, but and it's a way to, I guess, make it a bit fun rather than scary. Yeah. But it's also like it's, it's quite scary getting yeah. sweets from people's houses. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, yeah. nowadays as well. Oh, it's it's really what's actually yeah. in them. But it's also like talking of the 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 theme of death around it. It's yeah. like we're coming. It's autumn, right? So it's the yeah. dying off of the season and yeah. coming into coming winter. Into winter. And, yeah. and also remembering like the you know the harvest and everything that's gone before. So maybe the sweets are to do with the harvest. And maybe like abundance. The abundance of that, and the, but I mean. You know, I think it probably back in the day it would have been fruit or you would have got, you know... A few nuts yes. or a handful of something, yeah. wouldn't it? Something like, actually... Here, I have loads of candy. Let's give them loads of sugar <laughs> and yeah. turn the kids into oh my God. maniacs. But... They actually had a, a, a funny thing on... Um, this American show called Jimmy Kimmel. Have you seen that? I was watching... Tony and I watch it on YouTube because it's quite fun. Um, and he always does this thing like... Tell your child... They do... They get the parents to play tricks on the all kids. Right, oh right. my god, it was so funny. But they did this whole theme of tell the parent had to go to their child and say, I'm really sorry I ate all your candy. <laughs> but it was like a comment on society, right? Some of these kids were like, you ate all my candy. And then you'd get the odd kid that would be like, oh, that's okay. And you're just like, your heart breaks because you're like, oh my god, that kid's so going to be the nice mediator type. That's the empath. That one's like <laughs> cranky little bossy boots over there in the corner. That's so funny. So yeah. Yeah, sweets, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not, not sure about not that bit. They're honouring, but No. Especially when the kids are like, Yeah, I eat my candy and fighting over the candy and But the dressing up bit, I think yeah, any excuse. Great. Really. <laughs> I do think. I mean we had so much fun on that trip. And even sometimes it's just the getting dressed up bit that was almost as yeah. good as the night out. Yeah. Because when everyone's getting ready and what happens when people dress up is that inhibitions kind of yeah, drop yeah, and everyone talking to everybody point. and yeah. it is a talking point. Yeah. I loved out. We went to a party last year that our friend Chris was running mm, was, yeah. um, at Home House in London. Oh my God, everyone went to town on the dressing oh, up there. Laurie was a Medusa. I went, I was, I was supposed to be some, I don't know what I was, some sort of, fairy angel and then I, as soon as we arrived I found a, a scythe like one of those big grim reaper things and I was like okay I'll be the angel of death then that'll be fine Brilliant. so it worked really well and then we met about 10 other grim reapers yeah there was a really night. weird moment on the dance floor where we were just surrounded by scythes all these the scythes. grim reapers and death everywhere <laughs> but again it was like oh it's honouring the death and the rebirth it's the it's the regeneration I think all of it as usual is like your intention isn't it that you put behind it so yeah. if you're going to dress up and party just be honouring your loved ones while you're doing it as yeah well. yeah I don't really, I haven't really done the dress up thing really? 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 No, really, really Sally I went dressed as <laughs> the Might tallest person in town <laughs> and put on like mega hills oh brilliant I just went to yeah it was a great party but I was just the tallest person in that town at the time you could do Jack and the Beanstalk and be the Beanstalk <laughs> it's <Sorry. cliche. laughs> Jolly Green Giant? Anyone? The Jolly Green no. Giant? No. Oh, God. Those days are over. No. Yeah, no, he will like stand out enough. Don't right? bring back the, the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> Don't bring back the memories. <laughs> oh, my God. Peas on it. <laughs> Don't say peas. <laughs> my phobia, peas. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing ghosts don't scare yeah. me. Spirits don't scare me. I am scared by peas. Ex phobia. Sorry, ex phobia. Yes. Now I'm not phobic anymore. I still don't like them though. Oh no. <laughs> Little green. <laughs> oh, no. mm. Don't want them in my food. But we'd love to hear what you guys do to celebrate Halloween and what you're mm. doing this year to celebrate Halloween. We'd love to hear your stories. Um, anything you want to share with us. 
Um, yeah, any feedback, any other topics you'd like us to cover on Wake Ones as well, we are open for suggestion. Or if you know a really haunted place that's worse than Joshua Tree. Oh my God, are you, you putting us up for a challenge? No, I'm putting you up for a challenge. <laughs> Sally. Yeah. Oh my God. I'll keep car running. I have um, to call Yvette Fielding to come along. We don't, no, we can we do this. No, I mean like to add, add a bit of drama. Not that we have our own drama. <laughs> we don't need additional drama. No, we don't need Martin Acora or whatever his name is. So Derek, <laughs> come on. No, I can do that like silent like, oh, drama. I'm going to shit myself, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. On that note. But yeah, okay, all right. So, all right, we'll take the change. But the other thing, can I just say, is that I know that sometimes they are safe, but I would avoid... Ouija boards oh, yeah. with yeah, everything because you yeah know. it's mm. even if they even you know if you're just not sure anything like that you are actually opening up portals and you are actually allowing stuff yeah. to come in and we know from experiences that sometimes spirits pretend to be yes your loved nice ones people. just mm. so that they can have a route in so you know my wisest advice to you would be just mm. don't I mean yeah. I've never don't play with it. It's, Don't play with it. It's why I, my the problem I think I have with it is be respectful. You know, it's not yeah, a game. It's not it, a game. It's it's to be honoured and it's to yeah. be. You know, we don't really know. No. You know, if you want to contact somebody, yeah. you find a reputable uh, spiritualist church or somewhere yeah. where they're holding circles, circles, and and, and or a, a, an independent person. Yeah. Or an imp- yeah somebody yeah. that you have, and and again look for. Um, Referrals, you know, most people now that work in places will have testimonials. Go and have a look. Also, and we see can what recommend people. people if you, yeah, we if you can do too. want to find a, a really good medium, if you, you know, if you have lost someone and you want to contact them, and we know a load of amazing, amazing yeah, mediums that genuine. are really genuine because there are also, you know, it's it's the same in every profession. You get the the really good ones, and you can get some, but also go with your discernment. Go with go with your guidance. Yeah. So health and safety note yeah. over. And, and, then, <laughs> and maybe on the first, it might be an idea just to maybe take out some pictures of loved ones that have gone home, and you know maybe have a look at their pictures and write a candle yeah, to yeah. them and just you know just send them some love. Just just send. Yeah. You know. And give the trick or treaters some apples and oranges yeah, and healthy snacks and see if they throw them at your window. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't give them eggs. No, no eggs. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, on that note, happy oh, Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.